Now, this lecture is about us. What can we do to avoid further climate change? Because if we look in the media, TV, social networks and so forth, we see pictures of smokestacks, we see car, see car exhaust, power plants, and um, sometimes forests that are cut, but we rarely see uh, households in which you and I live. Uh, so are we insignificant uh, with respect to climate change? Or is it not so that we in the North particularly, we have lifestyles that are absolutely unsustainable and that uh, we need to change in a positive way to uh, make our life more healthy and more climate friendly? So let me talk about this in the MOOC. Uh, the MOOC is tuned to the lifestyles of middle to high income countries. But um, before you turn off, uh, coming from a low-income country, this is your lifestyle if we are not very careful in 10, 15 years. And so uh, if we do not change our lifestyle in, in the North, how can this uh, then ever change? Because uh, you will probably emulate much of our lifestyle. So it's about all of us. Now, uh, the good news is we are very powerful as households. We command, in rich countries, we command through our behavior, we trigger, if you like, up to 40% of all emissions in Sweden, in, in France and so forth. So what we buy, how we behave, how we travel and so forth, this is so important. So we need to have a look at this and not only at the obvious, let's say, culprits of climate change. Now, before we get into this, uh, the household contribution, here is a table that puts all the actors together. Governments, of course, should regulate, regulate the industry, but also regulate, for example, the prices of carbon and um, so give us signals as households that we buy or don't buy this and that. So um, they need to transfer financial and technological resources to not so rich countries and so forth. That's the government role. Next is industry, of course, guided or imposed by government. They must reduce the emissions that occur during their production process. Um, they, in the, in the energy business, they need to reduce, of course, the carbon content of energy and um, so forth. Agriculture has a role. We have talked about this. Keep forests intact, low carbon agriculture. Now, the red part is the key part for this MOOC, there are several ways we can help by improving the insulation of our house, improving the energy efficiency of all the appliances that we use from fridge to washing machines. Our, our mobility behavior is so important and we'll hear more about this in a specialized lecture whether we walk, whether we uh, use air uh, travel and so forth. And then what we eat. We've heard and we'll hear more about this, but I just want to put it together uh, in the context of what we as households, what we can contribute to um, emission control. And all of our behavior is, uh, is generating health co-benefits. And I will show this to you in uh, the next slide. Here is a household with, you see the power grid, you see uh, the roof insulation, you see appliances in the house and then our consumption behavior determines it's not only the hardware but our purchasing our consumption behavior determines how much co2 this our household um, is emitting and this is of course um, subject to policies and regulation but also subject to our personal values do we care about the climate how much do we value uh, prices, costs and savings that are, um, that are coming with some behavioral changes? And do we really know about all the health benefits that go with it? So these are the three kind of, if you like, influences on our behavior. How much we care about the climate, how much the cost structure deters us or invites us to do things, and whether we uh, see and know uh, the health benefits of something that we are doing. Here you see um, a lady in Norway um, filling up her dishwasher. This is really something that we can uh, command, that is at our, um, at our hands, how we equip our household, what we buy. 
Um, this is the table that I was referring to. You see here the four, um, let's say, the four dimensions which households can um, contribute to uh, lowering emissions. And you see, uh, for example, house structure, house equipment, transport and uh, food or eating patterns. And then uh, I have added an example and then I have added the CO2 savings, the cost that it generates to do something and the savings that it generates and then in the last column the health effects. So let's go to the house structure. If you change your roof, if you change your windows, you have a large impact on your carbon footprint. It costs a lot at the beginning. The investment costs are, costs are very high. The savings are moderate, but long term. And maybe after 10 years, you break even. But you must have the money. So the, the government has to help you come up with the investment costs so that you are, are able to do this. The health benefits are moderate. Lower blood pressure, there's less noise, mental health issues, mood issues, but it's not prominent. If you look at, for example, transport, the, the third line, if you walk, bike, less air travel, CO2 is also strong, savings are enormous and your health effects are enormous. And in the food rubric, you have uh, also a CO2 effect, but it's not dominating. What's dominating is the health effect. What this uh, table wants to show you that all three, CO2, financial and health, are involved in different, in different emphasis. And very often you have savings and it's not only costing something. And when it's a huge investment cost, the government should definitely help. Um, but this is something for you to check, if you like, your own behavior. But we are not only consumers, we are political actors. We have a right to vote, we are workers in companies, we are teachers, we live in neighborhoods, members of NGOs, you name it. So we have a, a voice and we should use this voice to bring the, the health argument into this field of cost savings, carbon footprint and to weigh in both in our own behavior and in uh, decisions of our decision makers, our policy makers. Thank you very much.